that we brought the computer with the water building into me today is once we've done that, we'll have the billing system in town hall. And Jack Mustrad and I are going to work jointly on getting the August 1st bills, August 2nd actually. If the board agrees to bring him back August 1st, he and I will jointly do the bills on August 2nd. And then the town hall will be rolling the bills out the first of every month from there.
compensation is basically going to be based on the court of county. Great opportunity to start over. 
And I think we are making a major mistake. Well, let me say this. We're taking over the bill. doesn't matter. He shouldn't be. We haven't had any heard any issues with the reporting. And we have a stop that's going on. Which is more of what this job's going to be going forward. And being a backup operator. So this time we can build. I understand your concerns, Chairman. I believe we put through hell and we need That's the reason why it's now. I would actually like to propose some amendments to this job description. I think that the issues that have been brought to light are all surrounding the billing. There haven't been any issues with the DDP reporting or Jack's um, performance at the plant. The job description right now does have some duties that involve, it says assistant billing and collection of past due accounts. Um, I think that needs to be amended and maybe as the operator like Jim does now, he takes priority in collection of past due accounts but not necessarily the billing of them. And I think that the billing reports can be done by whoever's actually going to be doing the billing, which would remove Jack from the areas of concern that everybody seems to have had and put him back in part time to do the, the DP reporting, the dealing with the water commissioners and, and that sort of thing, at least until this $25,000 audit study, whatever it's going to be, is done and see if there really are other deficiencies with the plant. And I think that's the best thing for the town at this time, to just totally dump Jack and not have a backup plan this close to when we need it. I think we need to take a decision. I guess I'm frustrated because I think Ralph and I a number of locations and a long time spent on the process. And two things we looked at. One, we felt they needed a business plan, an organizational business plan, something that's going on, which is why we don't have a backup plan tonight. But I think number two, we were waiting for Jack to retire because we thought, what a great opportunity to start the project. And, you know, I think you know how I'm going to vote. Because I think it's a bad There's a lot of things we could get out of this water company and I just have not seen. And I think having tried to pull teeth, you know, trying to get that computer to the town hall, which we agreed to back in April, we're just not going to end. We're a town of 1,200 people. I mean, this is not rocket science. I think that our water commissioner might have to get a little fault for some of the issues that have gone on, if only in that they really want to supervise their employees. So if we can all learn lessons from this, maybe, and try to move forward and keep our water department operating, doing the billing differently in hopes that we can move towards solvency, but quite frankly, I don't see that happening in time soon, no matter who does the bill. I was involved with the Charlie and the looked into this issue, I guess it was two years ago now, and the same issues just keep going on. I, I don't understand why the commissioners with the knowledge that Jack was going to retire, supposedly, have not moved quicker to find somebody to replace him. But at this point, you know, I feel that like there is really no other way forward to, to rectify this start with a clean slate. The problems of coverage are not insurmountable without that must be. We have we have an expert come in by the name of John Sauter from another town. He does this kind of fill-in work for a lot of other companies, work companies around the area. His opinion was that this is not rocket science, the other the other duties that Jack has. But it's a very strong guy, very strong support for Charlie. Yeah, um, you spoke of finding a backup operator. I've spent a year and a half trying to find a backup operator for our plant with the proper licenses and living in the proper geological or geographic proximity, proximity to the water treatment plant. Um, 
I have two people that are in town that have bigger licenses than myself. And they have no interest at all. They won't even come take a tour of the plant because they don't want to be involved in the Eggermont Water Department. I've got people from Springfield that come out and help me do leak detection, do instrumentation repairs, and they said the same thing. There's water plant operators are a dying breed. With the regulations that DEP and the RDA or whoever EPA keeps putting out, in the next 10 years, 80% of the operators will be retired. So there are no operators knocking on doors looking for jobs in small areas. We're very, very fortunate to pick up a person that works at a laboratory that has a treatment one license that is interested in working a part-time weekend job, does not want a full-time water operator's job. So, and I've been in the plant since the last weekend of June, the last week of June, all through July, while Jack's retired, and it's, you know, it's not a big killer job, but to get a day to go out of town, I can't do it right now. So, before you throw Jack under the bus totally, you better find another operator. Not only that, but people don't realize you're responsible for drinking water. A Some lot of people. people. That's right. In the DEP reporting, we do a daily reading in the plant that get recorded and transcribed from the daily reading to the monthly charting, gallonage, chlorine contact time that has to be at the DEP by the 10th of every month. And someplace in that computer is the addressing program that gives me the addresses and stuff which is not hard to find to DEP in Springfield. And we'll hopefully be moving forward electronically to confirm that by a thing. Well, a lot, of the, a lot of the forms have to be electronic now. Yeah. Fortunately, my forms that I do in the treatment plant, the recordings and stuff that I take, are all still being mail mail. I mail them in by the 10th of every month. I'm a snake just like you, Jim. Okay, I have a 1,200 pound chief engineer ticket, the marine gas turbine chief engineer ticket. And I used to run three facilities on my ships. Okay, I know what it takes to take readings and everything else. It's not rocket science. No. And, and what bothers the hell out of me is that we've had this problem, it's been an ongoing problem, and we're hiring back the very same person that's been in the middle of it. Finding a replacement for him. No, I think that's really the water commissioner's job, and they failed. I went out and I found him as an alternate, and I got kind of stepped on because I brought that person up, and I just casually said I hired another person. Not that I actually did. I brought him to the commissioners, and so it's <coughs> three at the front. It is rocket science. There's a lot more to it than just. Well, you have, and like you said, you've got 270, 277 connections in town times two, four, six, depending on how many people live in that house, plus the restaurant. And you better be supplying them good, safe, efficient water. EDP requirements every year, Jeff. Ten hours. I have to do 10 hours continue ed every year. Um, for a part-time job. Yeah, for, and it's very strict. I mean, we live under a microscope at that water treatment plant. They look for stuff to write notice of non-compliances on. And I'm doing some info, I'm doing some searching back through because they wrote us up for a not notice of non-compliance for not doing a chlorine testing. And I, it's, that's impossible. It's just impossible. We wouldn't do a monthly chlorine test for two months. So 
So, but it's, you know, that alarm goes off at 2 o'clock in the morning. Guess what? I don't see anybody else in the world up there at 2 o'clock in the morning answering those alarms. Even when the day's off, when I'm off, it calls me and it pages me. So, yes, uh, uh, A comment and a question. A comment would be that I was involved in that water study as well. And over the second one, we're out the same day. But Sullivan did it quite. And he's the only outside objective for it.
to be a little tight on coverage. You know, so she wasn't going to come until August 12th. Well, and I was wondering if you could speed up that process a little bit. You must have come sooner. Yeah. I'd like to be there. I don't know. Well, okay. Um, when do you guys meet next? Next week? Yeah, next one. She's not available. Hey, pardon? She's not available to come. We, we originally had her scheduled. Yeah, I kind of thought so. Yeah, available. yeah. So that makes it look. That makes it look. We'll have to wait for twelve. Okay, well we'll just wait for twelve. I mean, as I happen to know her, so I mean, it's totally up to you guys what you want to do with this. I wouldn't like her on the casino. You could certainly come here. We're we're out of luck. It's great now. We're in the one hundred. Bruce knows the plan enough to operate it, and he could get away with operating it for two or three days. You, want to okay, you, Bruce, you, you really want to do that, Bruce? No, I, that's the only reason why I brought it up because you know, something happens between now and the end of the month. Mm -hmm. You're going to fall and break your leg or something. Well, I, believe me, I'd like to move too, but I really would like to okay. text the people and we say hi. Yeah. All right, I guess we'll just have, just have to wait and take a chance, that's all. Bill Onser's gone, so we can't use him anymore. That, uh, no, uh, Linda Tibbs actually works with me. Yeah. And she's the one who's been coming to the town hall for months. Doing Pick up the sampling. Believe me, I've been out knocking on doors. I've been to 50 other water companies. When I go to my continuing ed classes all over the western and eastern parts of Massachusetts, and you ask people, what are you doing for operators? What are you doing for operators? Two people come up with a great idea. They went to their high school guidance counselors and they brought some paperwork from water plants and pictures and left them around the biology classes in town. We had the biology class from Berkshire a couple times. But anyways, for now we'll just have to wait until you look at the meeting and force them to work until you come down the road. That's my next question. I'm just going to ask you if I need it or an emergency. Yeah, it's got license or not. Of course. She got a T1 license. Okay. Guys from Barrington will come out. Pete, so Dan. Yep. Yeah. We're all. It would be good to familiarize yourself with the plant before she has to be used. A little bit. A little bit. She really doesn't have to familiar with it yet. But the biggest thing right now is changing the chlorine. As she's familiar with that. She has a treatment license. I kind of like to have her come up and just take a look around. Well, she did. She did already. Yeah, we spent Saturday at the plant. Oh. 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 All right. We all set? <coughs> okay. Anything more? 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 Anything more?